Hey welcome back everyone to another video and today I received a package from China from a company named Friendly Arm. So let's go ahead and unbox it and take a look inside. First of all, all we have is another box that contains the main Nano PC T2 board itself and then we get a heatsink and mounting hardware as well as a very solid white case. More on that later. Inside the smaller box we have the quick start guide and the board itself packed in an anti static bag now while i show you guys the board itself let me read out what all is on the board uh, moving clockwise starting from the soc so first of all right at the center we have our s5p4418 samsung soc now it is samsung but it's not an Exynos SoC, so it's a 1.4 GHz quad core Cortex A9 processor. Next, we have the Raspberry Pi compliant GPIO pin header, 1 GB of RAM, DVP camera, a full size SD card slot, uh, a real time battery socket so that you can hook up your battery so that it doesn't lose track of time when the system reboots, uh, external two uh, USB port header pins. A micro USB that's just for data not for power a boot select buttons to select which uh, do you want to boot off the SD card or the internal storage a gigabit uh, Ethernet port uh, USB 2 uh, two sockets uh, and a CSI camera interface and external headers for reset power and LED 1 and 2 pinout HDMI port capable of 1080p at 60 FPS uh, and DSI uh, connector for external display, a 24 bit audio jack, 5 volt DC uh, in uh, power barrel uh, port, and um, then we have a mic, a physical power switch, a UART port, and LVDS port for display again and then again we have our power management axp 228 ic wi-fi and bluetooth chipset a uh, couple of power and sd card leds uh, our reset button our external antenna for wi-fi and bluetooth uh, the emmc uh, internal storage so 8 gigabytes of emmc storage the power button so this is the physical uh, this is the soft power button and another RGB uh, LCD socket so that's a lot of stuff on this board so uh, believe it or not this is a really really feature rich and packed board at least on the sheet it is so next up installing the heatsink was a fairly simple process but uh, necessary things like a heatsink should be pre-installed by factory and not to be manually installed install especially when uh, the board will automatically shut down if you do not install the heatsink but it did give me a nice look at the soc before i could install the heatsink but then again there was a lack of documentation uh, if someone new to this uh, kind of stuff wants to install the heatsink uh, i couldn't find any documentation on how to do it uh, next up we um, are going to install the case and that was a completely horrible story it took me at least 20 minutes to figure out how to properly install the case uh, I had to push uh, on both the ends equally and um, at times I did fear that I might end up breaking the board but then again there were there was a lack of documentation and especially something that requires some special method to install such as this case it's not acceptable to have zero documentation on that so the next step is to review the unit and for that i need to power it on and that's why i ran into a lot of trouble the power pin on the board is not commonly found on devices unlike the one on the Arduino which can be bought easily and if you are a maker kind of a person it's already with you at your home. You can easily uh, put it uh, at, at 5 volts, 2 amp and power on the uh, board but uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not compatible with the Arduino power pin 
luckily i had one and i even i don't remember why where uh, i had that one and where it came from but if i didn't had that this mummy video might not be in production yet anyways um a usb power jack u usb to that barrel power pin jack should be included uh, with the board or or even if the bare uh, power jack is available it should be bundled and not sold separately uh, you know cause it's kind of a necessity to run this board so um on the positive side of things the barrel jack is easily available mostly and even the cheap ones can uh, have the capability of carrying a lot of voltage and current uh, through them unlike the micro usb uh, type power cables uh, which the cheap ones don't really work that well uh, and mostly found on the raspberry pi and you do have to buy a slightly costlier one to make everything uh, run properly so next up on to the review itself and i will be comparing the nano pct2 to the raspberry pi 3 uh, because of the similar price point and similar specs and features so first of all uh, let's go off on with android so the board itself comes preloaded with android 5.1 with uh, no planned future updates so don't expect to get a marshmallow or a nugget build anytime soon it takes its sweet time to boot not a very fast booting os but as soon it it does boot it's very obvious that the board is very sluggish and the android cannot provide a smooth user experience for this board CPU Z on and other such apps like Ida 64 fail to recognize the processor as a Samsung branded one but all the other specs check out correctly surprisingly there is a lack of temp sensor even when the CPU is super hot to touch after the heat sink is installed so um the onboard chip does not have a power sensor that means that if you take out the heat sink and the CPU overheats it's Uh, it could possibly burn itself out next up um, we have some benchmarks not too much antutu scored okay for the price uh, nothing surprising but antutu 3d was very very poor geekbench 4 was again a similar story with decent cpu scores but the gpu falls very short once again EMMC read and writes are close to that of a class 10 SD card so we do not get any speed benefits of the EMMC storage YouTube plays back uh fine but is stuck only at 720p as the android build is hard coded to the 720p resolution even though the board supports up to 1080p and 60 fps on its HDMI port Kodi will play back a properly 1080p 60fps videos but again downscaled to 720p due to the OS itself being hard coded to that resolution but at least android runs properly unlike on the raspberry pi 3 where the support is only an official as well as lacking proper youtube video playback capabilities and next up we have debian linux so this is the latest jesse linux and debian boots Uh, fairly quicker than the android build but since it's not really optimized like raspbian is for raspberry pi the user interface is not very smooth and the web browsing experience is less than comfortable with frequent hangs and crashes But on the positive side of things the Nano PCT2 comes preloaded with 3D graphics that work out of the box and can be used as oh oh uh that's bad one one GL Mark 2 scored just one on this board
even the Raspberry Pi with its experimental driver can score at least 70 on the GL Mark II. So now we can confirm that the Nano PC T2 is has an absolutely crappy GPU. So don't expect any graphics performance from this. Most at at most 1080p video decoding. That's all. Nothing more. But to end on a positive note, there are features on the Nano PC T2 that outweigh the Raspberry Pi 3. One would and would compel even someone like me to buy it over the Pi 3. First of all, there is a 100,000 gigabit Ethernet by Realtek that I couldn't really test right now as I do not have the router to support that bandwidth. But checking the controller spec sheet, it confirms that a gigabit Ethernet is present. It's great for DIY NAS setups. Uh, next up, we have the 8 gigabyte onboard storage. You don't need any extra SD card to uh, run the Nano Pi 2. It runs by itself from the internal storage. Uh, it's pretty niche in that manner. Um, next up, we have 24-bit audio. Awesome. Because, come on. Um, on the Raspberry Pi, what we have is not even a proper DAC. Uh, what it does, it does some sort of... Um, Conversion and signal processing on the software side of things to create a uh, somewhat around one uh, bit audio um, Via the PWM pins. It doesn't really Sound that good and you can clearly tell the difference when it's running on the Raspberry Pi versus something uh, on a proper even on a proper 16 bit DAC So uh, thumbs up for 24 bit audio so next up we have support for DVP and CSI camera modules as well as LVDS, DSI and RGB LCD panels for a total of 2 cameras and 4 display options. So you are really not limited to anything. You can just go ahead and put whatever kind of display you really want on this particular board. So some for it's 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 great for something like um advertisement panels and all of that stuff uh, next up it has an onboard a xp228 power management unit for functionalities of soft power and reset buttons as well as some advanced power management stuff which includes actually getting live feed uh, from the pmu itself about how much uh, watt and voltage is it is being consumed at the moment uh, next up we do have a physical on off switch power and reset buttons and Wi-Fi antenna sockets to extend the Wi-Fi range of the board so um, This was it about the nano PC T2 ending this review on a positive note There are some features on a nano PC T2 that really really uh, will can make you buy it uh, despite of the Raspberry Pi being a slightly better contender in terms of performance but um, I think it's it's an okay board overall uh, I might be using it for my NAS as I already do with the Raspberry Pi I might replace the Raspberry Pi with this and at the end thank you so much guys for watching do not forget to like share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one